Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to The Virtue Signal. I'm Bill Whittle with my friend and colleague, uh, Alfonso Rachel. And this is the show where we try to talk about some of the sort of moral and philosophical underpinnings of the um, maelstrom of malice that we see out there uh, today. Uh, Zoe, uh, today I wanted to talk about um, fortitude uh, as opposed to courage. You know, courage is the ability to kind of march into trouble. And even though you're afraid, you face it anyway. Uh, fortitude is the ability to withstand something, the ability to, to continue to withstand ongoing attacks. And I think the one thing that everybody on, um, you know, <laughs> anybody not on Team Satan uh, is feeling <laughs> out there right now is, is a sense of just this unremitting assault on everything, uh, not just traditional values, not just on patriotism, but just on, just on common sense, it just, just, just the world feels like it's upside down and, and it seems to be getting worse every day. I know a lot of people like me and like you are concerned about all of these things and worried that they're not going to come back. So why don't we give people a little shot in the arm and talk a little bit about the idea of, of fortitude, about the resistance to despair and, uh, and the willingness to stay in the fight, no matter how overwhelming things can look sometimes. Man, I tell you what, it almost seems like uh, they're trying to market that uh, that fortitude with us in a in, in a breakfast cereal or something like that, fortified with vitamins and minerals and all that sort of stuff. You know, <laughs> as we as we cram a bunch of marshmallows, and that's what we're getting, man. We're getting like this junk food cereal with marshmallows and and uh, dried so called frankenfruit or whichever, and telling them that it's uh, that it's fortified with vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. And that's what we're getting, man. We're getting we're getting this junk food virtue, right? This fast food virtue, or whichever, that makes people feel this immediate sense if I'm such a good person, like right off the bat, man, but there needs to be that real soul food nooch, right? Where we get that real spiritual uh, vitamin, min vitamins and minerals, man, where we actually get that, uh, where we're fortified, we get that, you know, the, the guts, man, the intestinal fortitude, man, the, the, uh, the, the testicular fortitude, the, yeah. the, the intellectual fortitude, backbone fortitude, however you want to call it, we want to be fortified with these things. And, um, and those kind of things, you know, where, it's, yeah, where does that come from? Now, for me, I'm going to tell you that, hey, you know, the, the word of God tells us Kazakh, man. He says, he says Kazakh. When Jesus shows up and he pops, he says Kazakh. He's telling us courage. Take courage. Oh. Um, because there's going to be things that are coming that you're really going to have to gird up for, man. You're going to have to gird up your loins on these. And um, it's the kind of thing. But right now, what we've got, you know, in America, Bill, courage <laughs> courage is like this thing of where people are going to speak truth to power. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got the freedom to do that. You know, it's like, you can go ahead and, and, and make all your panty waist platitudes and all that sort of stuff and getting out there talking about how woke you are. And there's really not any consequences to doing that. But I guess as long as you feel good about yourself, then, Hey, well, congratulations. But you know, that real fortitude that you're talking about, Bill. And, and, you know, there's, there's a, uh, <clears throat> I guess there's a nuance between, you know, courage and, um, you know, and this, uh, and this fortitude, you know, uh, to be able to say, Hey, man, we can really get jacked up, man. If we do this, we're going to do this for the right reasons. And, uh, and then you have those who, who, who will do something for the wrong reasons. Is that courage too? It's like, man, if we get caught doing this, man, you know, we go to jail and stuff like that. So is that another kind of courage? Um, and, and there's this perversion of what courage is. There's this distortion of what courage is and the fortifications to do these things. And I guess that's the, that's why we're trying to do this is to clear up and say, no, man, this is real courage. What you guys are doing right now with this social justice thing and stuff like that, maybe you think it's courage, but it's imagination. It's not really courage. Yeah. I think for me, for um, just having everything under everything I believe in under just continual assault and and to the degree that it's under assault. While you were talking, I realized, I guess what for me, uh, fortitude is is courage over time. Mm. You know, it's 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 the uh, it's the unwillingness to fall into despair or if you do, at least the willingness to get back out again. I'll give you a quick example. I saw an article uh, not too long ago, maybe a few days ago, I guess, and it was from a guy who um, 
an American living in China, married to a Chinese wife, talking about how rundown everything is here and how, you know, everything's old and dirty and everything in China is brand new and sparkly and stuff. And he said he's not going to come back to America. He's going to stay in China. He said, um, you know, it's actually just a it's a great place to live so long as you don't say anything, you know, bad about the government. <laughs> and, and, you know, and there's a moment there when I just thought, well, that sure would be easier, wouldn't it? You know, hmm. that'd just be easier instead of having to get up and fight this thing every day, just kind of roll with it and just sort of, okay, so, you know, I mean, I still get to do all the things I get to do and I still have my streaming Netflix and, you know, as long as I don't say anything particularly bad about the government, maybe I won't be banned or on YouTube or as you were or shadow banned as, as we are. Mm. And maybe that's the way to go. Maybe the thing to do is just to, is just to you know, live your own life, be happy and, and not worry about these bigger things. And that lasted for about, I don't know, 10 seconds maybe. <laughs> and then something inside me said, this is, this is cowardice and this is exactly what they want. Mm. This, is, this, is, this is what they're counting on and this is how civilizations go from annoying or weird into horrific is when good people decide – that they're just not going to fight it anymore. It's just too big for them, and and it's you know, and it's too inevitable. And 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 you get into this mode that that we saw Great Britain and even twenty years ago, which is, you know, older uh, older Britons just basically saying, "I'm just glad I won't live to see this catastrophe. I'll be dead by then." I I find that to be kind of like the the sound of of your voice telling you, you know, you're trudging through a blizzard and you've got another four miles to make it to shelter. And the back of your head is saying, just lie down, take a little nap. You're not going to sleep forever. Just take, just, just take a rest for five minutes. Lie down in the snow, mm -hmm. close your eyes, take a five minute nap and you get back up and do it again. And, and I know that you never get up from one of those naps mm -hmm. ever. And, and so I guess that's kind of where I was going with this one today is that, is that, uh, willingness to get back up and endure all of these assaults because they have to be endured if they're going to be overcome. And now, would that be like an example of the courage to say, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it? You know, it's like maybe, maybe it's just some people just can't imagine that it could get that bad uh, or, you know, this, this sense of complacency sets in and, you know, um, it's maybe it's it's a sense of delusion or, you know, where they really just don't understand how bad these things can get. Or maybe if they just keep their mouth shut, it'll pass by them or they won't get caught up in it or something like that. Uh, just all the while, this this, you know, oppression just kind of just keeps squeezing in on them. And maybe it just has the um, the effect of they just get sensitized to it and they really they they don't sense how you know, their freedoms are being taken away from just like some, some, maybe somebody doesn't recognize their own BO, you know, it's like, man, seriously, man, you should, you should try some deodorant. And they just don't really get how the funk is just like, just, you know, it's just coming, it's just bouncing off them. Right. And well, I uh, guess, I guess what I was getting at is, is not so much people who don't realize it. it it's people like us who do realize it. Mm. I mean, it, it is so discouraging to look at the news every single day and just mm. to see, you know, it, we're we're going to pass a $2 trillion infrastructure bill that's going to be paying people to have uh, high-paying union jobs. And, and, and you see these things and you just go, what is going on? And and the ability to, to suffer those kind of outrages, and that's what it is, really. It's suffering. It hurts. It hurts to see these things. It hurts me anyway. I know it hurts you too. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. And, and there's a, there's a, a real tendency to either give up in anger or give up in um, in uh, surrender, kind of. You know what? I'm just gonna whatever. You know, I'm just gonna keep my head down, mm -hmm. and and that's what that's what tyranny depends on. And when you see people actually standing up again and again and again, it turns out most of the time those people win. But I guess I was just looking for your take on on what you do and what it takes for you to just get up and fight another day, because. When you get right down to it, that's really it. It really comes down to, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to get so much worse that, that we can't do anything about it. But all I know is today, I'm going to fight today. I'm going to, I'm going to get up and fight today. And I guess we'll see tomorrow how I feel.
Yeah, right there, Bill. It's like you know when a person is uh, saying, "What are they going to fight?" Even if it's the, it, even if it's their inclination to keep their head down, right? They're still knowing that there's something to face. I guess deep down, they still know that there's something to face. And you know, which which complication, which which fight do you want to handle? Which in what area do you really want to be co courageous? Right? Is it the courage to be able to stand up against this and say, hey, uh, you know, uh, the policymakers? and say, hey, you can't be doing, this is really gonna, this is gonna drive up the cost of everything and we're gonna be right back to square one, people wanting bigger compensation pra uh, uh, packages, uh, <laughs> excuse me, minimum wage increases and whatnot, all these things which are gonna pass, you know, the cost back onto the consumer, we're back to square one. Or do you face the culture and say, hey, you know, why are you, uh, you guys are, you're being drones, you're being fascistic drones. Uh, and, and do you want to face them, these, this, this mob of entitled people who are going to just, uh, eviscerate you, you know, uh, in, in your life? So which one do you want to face? Uh, one way or another, it's going to, uh, be a complication. And one of those things have to have a, a redeeming value to it if you're going to take on that complication. How I cope with it is that I take it to the word of God and the word mm -hmm. of God shows me and say, it's, it's one of those things, you know, I hope folks can understand. You don't read the Bible. The Bible reads you. And when you, when you, when, when you examine it, it's like, yeah, I, I told you this is going to, I created humans. This is how they behave. And, and so, well, God, why don't you do something about this? Because you would hate me for it. I'm a just God. I've got to let this uh, go, thing play out before I bring this judgment. I'm going to have to show that when it comes, I have an air tight case against you, right? And those who have the courage are the ones who can trust and say, okay, God, I, I, I'm going to trust that you know what you're doing on this. What are your instructions? And so what we have to do is we got to get out there and report and show that, hey, this has happened before. If you go down this road, it's going to lead to a whole lot of problems. I cope by knowing that, hey, man, right now we ain't faced nothing nothing like what Jesus faced and mm -hmm. the prophets that he talked about who were telling of his coming. And uh, an example I could give, Bill, uh, because here's the thing, this goes in stages, spiritual, cultural, political. Right. This is gonna. This is how this is gonna happen. Word of God tells us like you're not wrestling against you know flesh and blood. You're wrestling against powers and principalities. Things that when you look at this stuff and you say, dude, how can you not get this? It's right there. It's almost like as I said before. It's like it's supernaturally stupid. It's like you cannot. How do you miss this? But uh, when we see it, um, we saw that guy uh, where, where the police came into his church. Right. Yeah. Now, this is an example of courage. And where he's coming from is there's a fear. There's a legitimate fear. This is a fear that's even more than uh, uh, reflecting on Nazi Germany. This is this is this goes way back further than that. When you have people who are going to come into your church on a, on a on a holiday that reflects on on the foundations of our faith, and you're just going to come into this church and you're going to try to flex your authority in arrogance against against what God has decreed. It's like your law is going to trump his law and, uh, and his statutes and his, uh, his, 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 fest his festivals. But the thing is, Bill, we know that when you had people of faith who were there, who saw Jesus do what he did, and you're going to have people who saw it too. It's like, what are you doing, man? You saw the same thing that we did, but they were more afraid of their government than they were of God. And they would still round up these Christians who would testify, look, man, you're not going to change. You're not going to change what I saw. Okay, that's fine. Well, we're going to tie you up and we're going to coach you and pitch and we're going to use you as a lamp and set you on fire to set, uh, to light up the streets. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Well, this pastor knows that that kind of stuff happens. And that's what comes when you have agents of the state who will just walk into your church and start, start to boss you around. The courage to say, no, man, you're not going to do this. We know what we stand for and we stand for those who know and they saw what this, this isn't like seeing Elvis, man. Where it's like, oh, I saw Elvis. Really? Are you willing to have your skin torn off and have rocks uh, gone upside your head to stick to that testimony? Well, these people know what they saw and they went to a gruesome and bloody death by the hands of the state. You know, especially when people say that, hey, oh, Jesus was a stated. No, Jesus, the government killed Jesus. OK, <laughs> he wasn't a statist. OK, uh, but at any rate, Bill, when we talk about courage and how do I cope, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to follow in the footsteps of this guy who faced some real nasty stuff. And what we've got here right now, 
uh, we can become that and yep. we better make sure that we don't. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's funny you mention that because I think that when you get right down to it, fortitude, the ability to just keep getting up every day and, mm. and fighting, it, it does come down to, it comes down to faith, mm -hmm. really. And, and it doesn't even have to be, uh, religious faith. I know mm. that's, that's a, a enormous, uh, comfort and, and basically so much of our society is structured on, on that entire, uh, idea of faith, but it can even be like an individual faith. Mm. I know for me, when I when I want to just kind of just close my eyes and, and stop swimming upstream and just <laughs> go with the flow, I just I just realize that I have I have a fundamental belief. It, it it lives inside me and it's not going anywhere, no matter how tough things get out there. I have a fundamental belief that I am on the side of the truth and I'm on the side of that that we're, that I'm right. And not right in a prideful kind of way, like I'm right about the Gators being better than the Seminoles. I mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm on the side of, of when I said right, what I, what I meant to say was righteousness. Mm. I think that sense of righteousness lives inside people, makes them a kind of an incorruptible kind of a, of a thing. And hope, hope is the, is the human emotion that, that gets us through short term, uh, relatively short term, uh, traumas. We're out in the middle of nowhere on a, on a raft and nobody knows where we are, but we can still hope that a ship will come by or, or something like that. But it seems to me that, that fortitude, courage over time is based more on Faith and hope. Hope is kind of like a, boy, that sure would be nice if. Faith mm. is kind of like, no, this is going to happen. Mm. And and I suppose, like you, I just have faith that 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 the world, that the, that the insanity of the world cannot triumph and will not triumph. And since it will not triumph, I want to be on, I want to be, it's not even that I want to be on the winning team. I want to be counted on the team that stood and did the right thing when the right thing needed to be done. That's really important to me. Indeed, man, I, I hear you. And that's, and that's maybe sometimes at the end of the day, that's as good as it's going to get. Um, yeah, know. maybe that's that's maybe that's all there is to it, right? You just you just got up and you and you fought them today, mm -hmm. and you you try to fight them tomorrow. We'll fight them until we can't fight them anymore. Yes, yes, you know, and and the, the you know the word tells us you know it calls it salt and light, you know, uh, the objective uh, our our commission you know, in, in the word is to be salt and light. We're supposed to take these truths and we're supposed to make them savory. Right, we're supposed to make them palatable and tasty to people, uh, and not only that, salt is meant to preserve. That's our mm. job. We're supposed to preserve our liberty, our God-given liberty. We're supposed to be light. We're supposed to say, "Hey, this is this is the truth right here." You know, the the light that shines on the floor and is a lamp to your feet, not a light that shines in your eye and blinds you. You know, as as the Word of God says, the the, the devil masquerades as an angel of light. He dazzles. He blinds people. So you know, and what we're trying to do is make sure that, hey, you know, as it is, we're under, you know, like the law of entropy. We're, we're subject to these natural laws and and we're going to break down and it's going to change into something else. That's inevitable. That's just natural. That was something that we can observe in nature. And um, as is, will this republic eventually just decay? And what we want to be able to do, Bill, is that we want to make sure that we're not contributors to the decay. We want to make sure that we are those who are who are at least giving the message, hey, this is what we want to be able to do to conserve our republic. Everything, protect the remnant. Yeah, that's protect right. the remnant. Everything has a shelf life, right? We just want to make sure that we're not contributing to it. Hey, man, if we can if we can get some folks out of this burning building, you know, let's do it. You know, it's worth the shot. We know that we can't. You can't save everybody. It's like I say, you know, we're, we're, we have a lot of this quest that we're out to save America. America can't be saved for this simple reason. America has already been saved. The Lord already saved America. We're a saved country. We're a saved world as it is. The objective is to let people know that they are saved. But you got a lot of people out there who are who are acting out of fear, acting out of pride, acting out of whichever. They're like people who are drowning. You know, and you you show up and you're like, hey, your, your your salvation is here. It's already been taken care of. And that person will jump on top of you and try to push you down, you know, and, and kill you out of duress. And sometimes when you go out to save somebody's life who are drowning, you got to go up and you got to knock them out. Right. You got to hit them hard yeah. and then drag them back. And this is how the Lord works. It's like, look, man, I may have to hurt you, you know, <laughs> to, to, yeah. to, to remind you that you are saved already. 
Well, when you say we're salt and light, sometimes it seems to me the only salt I have left is salty language uh, when, it, when it comes to thinking about these people. Um, I don't know that this has any bearing on anything really, but uh, when I was in my 30s, my mom told me that uh, when I was in second grade, she had a you know PTA meeting kind of thing. And she went to my second grade teacher and she held on to my mom after the rest of the people had left. She said, I had a dream about your son. And mm. My mom said, oh, that's interesting. Um, and, she, and the teacher said, uh, yeah, there was a fire in the classroom and, and Billy was standing on, the, on my desk showing people the way out, you know. And, and, and that, that's not the optimum result. We don't want to say that, that things are, you know. I, I think since I'm, I'm trying to find the positive in this, I think what you're, what you're saying is true. That things like a government has a shelf life. Hmm. But the ideas... And the ideals of of this government are eternal, and 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 since they're eternal, somebody's got to hold on to them, and somebody's got to keep them safe and protected. Even if they have to do that undercover, even if they have to throw themselves over it to protect it from the fire or or the floods or whatever the case may be. Mm. But certainly, the things that are that are out there that that we all love as Americans and identify with as Americans are beyond the reach of. Uh, of election results and and they're beyond the reach of of corrupt media and all the rest of it. And I think I guess just the final advice for our viewers is when things seem like they just can't get any worse uh, there is a uh, a really well-tested adage among uh, 12-step programs of people dealing with horrible addictions whose overwhelming desire is 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 to just simply give up and relapse. And, you know, and they say, you know, one day at a time. And when things are tough, um, it's not even one day at a time. It's like an hour at a time. Or mm -hmm. or can you go five minutes? Can you do five minutes and see how we do in five minutes? And that to me is fortitude, is the, is the willingness to simply endure it, knowing that what we are enduring is uh, painful but necessary, and if we don't endure it, then uh, we lose what we're trying to protect. And And I would like to, as I say, I'd like to live up to the example of the people who came before us. You know, I, mm. I don't think anybody can be a Winston Churchill, but I know that he was scared out of his wits. Uh, he mm. just didn't let it beat him. And I guess that's kind of what I was going at with the topic of the show today. Indeed, you know, and I, I know that, um, you know, a lot of folks are, they're wanting to be encouraged. You're seeing what's happening, you know, to our country. And a lot of it is, is sensationalized in the media, but a lot of people, they succumb to these things. Um, yep. You know, it's, um, it's, it's quite, it's quite satanic, Bill, because, you know, what, we're, what people are seeing is that they're seeing this frame of what's, what's being told is truth, you know, and the media tells us this, and people are out there and they're reacting to fear, whether it's fear of, of uh, racism, fear of being sued, fear of uh, uh, transphobia, uh, COVID and whatnot. You have this, this studio, this satanic studio that, that, yeah. that, that media wants people to view things in. And that's the same thing that Satan did with Adam and Eve. I want you to view this just like this. I want you to see that fruit. Is there anything wrong with it? You've been made to be afraid of something else. This, let me tell you what to be afraid of. You need to be afraid of God who's holding out on you. You go ahead and eat this and you'll be woke. You'll be enlightened, right? That's what you want, isn't it? So that's what people are being told, you know, today. And we're being, there's, there's a distortion like I said, of what courage is. And for me, I can't give over to my own ideas of courage or what makes me courageous because I could have that twisted up too and do something that I think is courageous and be a liability to somebody else and myself, my family and all that sort of stuff. So I need, I need something to base my courage on. And a lot of people, they're, they don't have that level eternal basis of what to base and build courage on, build fortitude on, something over time. And when I'm talking about time, I'm talking about the Lord himself, who is the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He is the self-declared uh, uh, time itself, right? And when I look at this Jesus, when you talk about courage, it's like, man, I'm God. I'm going to step off my throne. Right. I got, mm -hmm. I got, I got, I got a righteous crown, man. I'm going to take on a crown of thorns for you guys. 
if at any point, man, I could exhale and blow out the sun and blow you all away, but I'm gonna take a lot of licks for you. And even Jesus, man, broke into the floor, man, and sweat and blood saying, hey, Pops, man, is there any other way that I, if, I, if there's any other way that we could do this, that would be great, <laughs> right? But if this is how we gotta do it, then I understand that I'm a soldier and I'm gonna throw myself over a grenade to protect all these people who are gonna mm -hmm. spit on me, sock me in the jaw, strip me naked and hang me on a stick. Now, when I think about that, I'm like, who am I? Man, let me just go ahead and get up and face this day, man, of, of these people, you know, uh, um, you know, stripping this country away from us and doing it in ways that we're having to be dependent on. We're, we're being made to be dependent on these platforms, man. We're being made to be on these things where they're, they're taking our voice away from us. It's totally satanic because the word of God says that the devil is the prince and the power of the air. The transmissions that are moving over the air from satellites to terrestrial locations, they're being controlled by the prince and the power of the air, which means that we're, we're even dependent on the very air that he rules over where he's murdering us with every breath that we take and i'm just looking forward to the day you know where he's no law where he's where the lord says okay you have violated your parole for the last time i'm gonna snatch your behind up and i'm throwing you into prison forever yeah yeah wow um yeah so i would just say for for those of you who feel overwhelmed and outnumbered and all the rest of it uh i would just simply say you know that uh that the lion doesn't care how many sheep there are mm. You know, have a thousand sheep, ten thousand sheep, fifty thousand sheep. Lion's not afraid of sheep, and it doesn't matter how many of them there are. So, you know, when it's time to be the lion, you be the lion, and um, and that's why we we do shows like this to to encourage you because I know uh, I know so many of us out there are just feeling just beaten down and 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 just look at a future that seems to be getting worse and worse and worse, and maybe it will get worse and worse and worse for a while, but. We're on the side of truth and goodness because I do believe truth and goodness win in the end. That certainly seems to be the case. And 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 now's the time for, for fortitude. And I hope to some degree, some small degree, this may have helped you, um, you know, face another couple days or weeks of this, uh, this lunacy that we see out there. Anything that cannot continue will not continue. So... There's that, I suppose. Uh, this show is made possible by the members at BillWhittle.com who, who pay monthly to make sure that everybody out there can see it for free, and especially the new members that we had uh, back a couple months ago during our, our membership drive who allowed us to bring uh, the amazing Zoe Rachel uh, back, uh, back here and back to YouTube as well. So we'll see you next time right here on The Virtue Signal.